Hello and welcome to the Ose Toujours podcast, episode 12. I'm Monty, the founder of Ose Patterns, and recently I hit the 20,000 followers on Instagram. And to celebrate this milestone, I wanted to offer a series of episodes about using social media, especially Instagram, to grow my brand, uh, Ose Patterns. Whether you're thinking about launching or growing your own sewing pattern brand, if you're an influencer or simply a passionate sewer, I hope my experience will give you some insight and new perspectives on how you use social media. So I hope you enjoy the episode. Before we dive into today's episode, I'd like to give you a brief introduction about the podcast. So far, I've released 10 episodes in French, where I talk about the behind the scenes of Ose Patterns and um, about entrepreneurship. Up until now, I've never done any episodes in English. I've been wanting to try this idea for a while, so here I am, giving it a go with this episode without a formal introduction. But that's okay, because this way you'll get a real feel for what I share and you can decide for yourself. Let me still give you a quick introduction though. So my name is Monty and I'm the founder of Ose Patterns, a sewing pattern brand. Um, the brand has been around for four years now and I offer patterns in both English and French along with uh, video tutorials. I'm a solopreneur. I live in Paris, uh, but I spent a year in Canada, which really helped me improve my English. And another unique aspect of my journey is that I made a career change. I studied for two years at the prestigious uh, École de la Chambre Syndicale de la Couture Parisienne. And I also worked in a Parisian luxury ready-to-wear atelier learning from professionals as an assistant pattern maker. The brand's name is Oz Patterns and Oz means being bold in English. And I chose this name because it wasn't easy for me to take the leap to change careers, to go solo and to start my own business. So now you know the essentials and we're ready to start the podcast. And maybe one last thing before we begin. Uh, after listening, I'd love to hear your feedback on this first experience. Does this topic interest you? Would you like more episodes in English? What subjects would you like me to cover? Thanks a lot for your help and now the episode. Not too long ago, after four years of building my sewing pattern brand, Ose Patterns, I hit 20,000 followers. Now, 20,000 is both a lot and not much at the same time. Let me explain. It feels like a lot because I know how much work, consistency and content creation went into reaching that number. It feels like a lot because when I first launched Ose Patterns, I started out with just 1,300 followers. And it feels like a lot when I imagine these 20,000 people all gathered in one space. And thinking of these people all looking at the content I've created feels simply mind-blowing. But on the other hand, it's not that much. Firstly, in the world of sewing and DIY, both in France and internationally, there are accounts with 40, 50, 100,000, even 200,000 followers. So in that sense, 20,000 is still relatively small compared to those giants. Also, when I post on Instagram, I'm not engaging with all 20,000 followers at once. I usually interact with the same group of people regularly. So in reality, 20,000 is just an abstract number when I compare it to the number of actual conversations I have. Today, now that I've crossed this 20,000 milestone, I view the number with more distance. But trust me, I didn't always feel this way. In fact, there was a time when hitting 10k followers, not 20 but 10k, became a real obsession. And in this episode, 
I want to share with you everything I thought would come with reaching that 10k mark and what really happened in reality. So be sure to listen until the end of the episode. Feel free to share a screenshot of this episode in your story to let me know what you found interesting. You can also like, leave a comment or post a positive review. It means the world to me when you share your thoughts with me. Your support helps me so much and it truly encourages me to keep going when I see that the podcast is meaningful and sparking a conversation. So let's dive into this episode. For me, reaching 10,000 followers became a symbolic and almost obsessive goal. I'm going to list the three ideas I had about hitting that milestone, one by one. Then, in the second half of this episode, I'll share my thoughts on each of those ideas based on my own experience. Idea number one, a brand with 10k followers is credible. In my mind, having 10,000 Instagram followers meant that Os Patterns was a legitimate brand in the sewing world, especially when it came to collaborations and partnerships with fabric companies. Basically, I believed that if I were to approach a fabric brand, the fact that I had 10k followers would show them that by collaborating with me, by giving me fabric in exchange for visibility, they could expect some worthwhile exposure and potentially boost their sales. It's a pretty understandable reflex. Whether you're a pattern brand, an influencer, or even just a sewing hobbyist, we naturally tend to think that the more followers we have, the more legitimate we feel in asking for free fabrics in exchange for a project and a post. And when you look at the Instagram accounts of sewing influencers, whether they're professionals or not, you can really see these dynamics at play. So it's totally normal to think that way. Idea number two, hitting 10k followers leads to exponential growth. What I thought was that once you reach 10,000 followers, it sends a signal to other sewists and potential customers who aren't yet following me that uh, my account is worth following. I believe that crossing the 10k threshold would help boost those patterns visibility much more easily and rapidly, like hitting a critical mass. I imagine that this number would be a tipping point, allowing the account to grow exponentially, like a snowball effect. Idea number three, I'll be a superstar with 10k followers. A superstar in the sense that I would feel confident and validated with 10k followers. I've put this idea last, but honestly, maybe it should have been first. Let's be real. Behind this number, there's definitely some ego, vanity, and a bit of comparison with other accounts, a race for popularity. I thought that with 10,000 followers, I'd finally have a significant audience, my community. This would mean my work was being recognized and that sales would take off because my products would be showcased to a larger audience. Are these ideas similar to what you think about this infamous 10k milestone? Do you think these assumptions turn out to be true in real life? I'm going to play a short 30 second clip now, giving you some time and space to pause. During this break, I invite you to reflect on your own social media goals. How many followers would you like to have and what do you think it would bring you? Today, having crossed the 20k mark, I've had time to reflect on these three ideas. So idea number one, the credibility of the brand. For me, 10,000 followers meant my brand was legitimate for partnerships. Idea number two, the exponential growth. I thought reaching this milestone would cause my follower count to explode. 
Idea number three, becoming a superstar. I believe that the 10k followers would give me confidence and validation of my work. So now I'm going to break down each of these ideas and debunk some common misconceptions you might have about them. Idea number one, a brand with 10k followers is credible. I'd say yes and no. I have a lot to say about this first idea because I think it needs a bit of nuance. First of all, the impact of your follower count really depends on the goal you have for your account. Is it purely for fun? Are you looking to fund your passion for sewing through partnerships? Or do you aim to professionalize and become a pattern brand or sewing influencer? And depending on these goals, the number of followers will have a different effect. So in the end, what your follower count says about you is more about your ability to navigate the platform and build a community around your content. But the number of followers doesn't necessarily reflect your ability to create engagement, meaningful connections or conversations with your audience. And it certainly doesn't indicate whether you can convert that audience into potential customers. So having 10,000 followers alone does not determine whether a brand is credible or not. You also need to consider other metrics like your engagement rate, the reach of your post and the success of your past collaborations. And these elements show how effective you are at converting part of your community into actual customers. That's what we call conversion. And then followers can be bought. I'm not sure this practice is still as common today, And I don't know if anyone in the sewing world has done it, but regardless, it's possible to buy an audience and artificially inflate your follower account. There's actually a pretty simple way to spot this by looking at the follower profiles. You might notice that they seem fake or that they're from regions that don't make sense given the brand's location. You can also see it when there's a noticeable gap between the number of followers and the engagement on posts, likes or comments. It's also important to look at a profile's growth potential, not just its follower count at a specific moment. I have a story for you. When I first launched Aus Patterns, right at the start, I probably had around 3000 followers, I decided to host a giveaway to offer fabrics and build the account's visibility. And the person I was dealing with made some condescending remarks about my followers count being lower than theirs. I'm sure if I'd had more followers, they wouldn't have made those comments. This brings me to my point. Partners who only focus on your follower count without considering your overall brand vision and potential are making a mistake. So the follower count alone doesn't mean everything. On a personal note, I've also noticed that the accounts I'm drawn to, whether it's creators I admire like musicians, they often have relatively small followings. And these smaller accounts can inspire me more than some of the bigger ones. So in this sense, follow accounts has nothing to do with credibility, value, or the sense of wonder that an account can offer. So a question you might be asking yourself, should you do partnerships to grow your account? Yes, if that feels right to you, absolutely. For me, I didn't really go for the giveaway or contest route to grow my account quickly. It just didn't interest me. I prefer that people follow us patterns because they genuinely like the brand and connect with the approach I offer. But maybe I should have done it to grow us pattern faster. I've asked myself this question many times, but I always come back to the same answer. I prefer quality relationships over quantity, but it's up to you to decide. Idea number two, hitting 10k followers leads to exponential growth. I'd say yes. There's likely a snowball effect that can happen, some kind of momentum that helps. But as for exponential growth, that hasn't been my experience. When I passed uh, 10K, 
I thought I'd hit a critical mass that would make it easier for the account to grow just by doing the bare minimum, relying on that snowball effect. But that didn't happen. The path to reaching 10k was slow and the same goes for getting to the 20k. So honestly, I don't have much else to say on this point because my experience has shown me that it doesn't get easier once you hit a certain follower count. Idea number three, I'll be a superstar with 10k followers. So I'm sure you want to know, did I become a superstar? (laughs) Not really. Um, Well, maybe just a little because there's a very big DIY fair in France twice a year and some people recognized me and took the time to show me an Oz project they've made and that they are wearing. So I have such fond memories of those interactions and to me that feels like a touch of fame because my work is mostly solitary. I'm genuinely thrilled when you come up to me to compliment my work and share your experience with uh, Oz patterns. Have my sales skyrocketed? Yes, a bit, but not in direct proportion to my follower count and not as much as you might expect. Social media, and Instagram in particular, makes it easy to showcase your work. When used properly, especially when keeping mental health in mind, it's a very valuable tool. With Instagram, it's easy to have a shop window for your products, but there's still work behind the scenes to generate sales. In conclusion, the satisfaction of hitting 10k or even 20k followers is very short-lived. But the good thing is that ever since I reached 10,000 followers, I no longer set any goals based on follower numbers. Plus, that number fluctuates, sometimes it stagnates. People unsubscribe, others join. Sometimes I'm lucky enough that one of you makes a stunning project that inspires more people to follow us patterns. The key for me is the quality of the connection and the interactions. I hope this experience has given you a new perspective on social media use and maybe even inspired you. I'll dive into more aspects of social media in the future, but I'll stop here for today. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed it, feel free to subscribe and give it 5 stars on your podcast app or a like on YouTube. That will help others find it more easily and it will give me the energy to keep recording future episodes. If you feel like it, I'd love for you to continue this conversation with me on Instagram at oz double underscore patterns. I hope with oz patterns you'll surprise yourself and discover talents you didn't even know you had, ones that go beyond sewing. And what if you dare to try?